Hey guys, what is up? I'm coming as you guys another video. It's a little different this time. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're doing a World Cup prediction video with Jared and Gage right here. So uh, that's gonna be what we're gonna be doing today. And uh, let's get right into it. All right, guys. For the first group, I think well, Group A, we got Russia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Uruguay. Those are the four teams in this group. So uh, let's start off, Jared. What do you think is gonna happen in that group? I mean, overall, it's a pretty solid group. But I think Uruguay and Egypt are going to come out on top just because of talent-wise. I mean, Russia and Saudi Arabia are respectable teams, but they don't have the talent like Egypt and Uruguay do. I mean, obviously, Egypt has Mo Salah and Uruguay has Suarez and Cavani uh, up top. So, I mean, they're just superior. So, I, I think that's going to be great. Yeah, respectable. Okay, what do you think? So, I agree in some parts with uh, Mr. Moore, but also I disagree because I believe Top in the group is going to be Uruguay. They have obviously Kamani Suarez up top, like he said, the two powerhouse strikers. However, I think Russia is going to get through due to their home field advantage. And I don't think Egypt is good enough. I think, you know, because of Salah, people are, you know, thinking that maybe they're going to do something, which I know they have like El Nani, they have a few good players, but I think the home crowd is going to fire Russia through to the quarterfinals and where they're going to play either Portugal or Spain. You really think so? I really do think so. Well, I, I'm actually I'm gonna agree with Gage. I think I don't I, I like I like to see Egypt get through, but realistically, I think it's obviously Uruguay's on top. There's no question about that. That's, I mean, like if they don't, that'd be surprising. But Russia, I think they will too, just because like that's just kind of how soccer goes sometimes. And knowing how it's gonna be, they're gonna be home crowd. The Russian fans are gonna be crazy. I, I definitely think Russia's gonna get through. All right, on to Group B, and in this group we've got Portugal, Spain, Morocco, and Iran. So for this one, this one's a bit interesting because Spain's manager has actually just been sacked and he's going to be the new Real Madrid manager. And Fernando Hierro is now going to be the manager of Spain during the World Cup. And he's been with them for a while, but I think it's going to shake chemistry a bit. What are you all thinking? Yeah, I can agree. I can agree with that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see Spain going very far anymore. I, they used to be favorites uh, up there, but not anymore. Yeah, so let's, let's kick it off with the prediction. So, Jared, what are you thinking for the four teams? What are you thinking in the finish? First, I'm going to have to go now Portugal because of uh, the Spain's manager. Um, Portugal, obviously, are 2016 winners. They uh, obviously a bit of luck on their side, but you yeah, have arguably the best player in the world with Ronaldo. Um, and you just have good talent overall. I was a bit peeved that they didn't pick Ronnie Lopez, the Monaco uh, winger, yeah. instead of Coerzma, because uh, Ronnie Lopez came off a really good season. But uh, yeah, I mean, Morocco, they got in the World Cup for a reason. They're one of the top teams in uh, North Africa. And Iran, Iran uh, had a good outing last time. They almost had that draw with Argentina until Messi came on. And I really like their uh, striker, Sardar Az Azmoun. Don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's young. Very, very good. Already uh, one of the top goal scorers for Iran, so it's going to be exciting. So you think it's going to be Portugal and then Spain? And yes. Yes. So I think I think it's going to be Spain and Portugal, just because like they do have a new manager, but their new manager has like like the guys said have been with them for a while. So I think Spain can still get first. Portugal, in my opinion, like they're going to do decent, but I don't know how far they're actually going to go. Considering that, in my eyes, they don't really have that many other talents besides Ronaldo compared to these other teams like France and Brazil and all these Germany and all, all the above really. So I think they will advance. I think through Spain, Portugal, that's what I think is going to happen. So I'm agreeing with Ryan there uh, that Portugal will not go far. However, I disagree with him and agree with Jared that I think Portugal is going to end up winning their group. and. I know obviously Portugal's squad isn't great, but you know Spain with the manager sacking coming through, I think that's gonna, you know, maybe knock the morale a bit. I think they'll still get through, but uh, Portugal, even with their lack of talent, if my predictions are right and they go through in first, then they're gonna be playing Russia in the round of 16, so they could actually advance to the quarterfinals that's true. pretty easily. Yeah. Let's get the group C. In group C, we've got France, Australia, Peru, and Denmark. This one's a little like. There's those three teams. Sorry, excuse me. There's those three teams um, in Group C that aren't really like huge, huge powerhouses. You know, there's Peru, Denmark, and Australia. France. I think there's no brainer for all of us. France is going to finish top in that group. Yeah. 
Um, but then it comes down to Australia, Peru, and Denmark. So what do you guys think for that second spot? Um, I mean, obviously, you kind of have to pick Denmark. They just have a, they have a strong spot overall. Um, Goldberg and uh, obviously Ericsson leading the front line. But I think I'm going to go with Peru here. They're probably, them and Panama are probably two of the worst teams in the actual World Cup. Uh, but Peru just has a magic, magic yeah. uh, quality to them. They, they got here very luckily, um, and the whole country is invested in it. I'd love to see them go into the round of 16. That'd be, that'd be a good experience. I mean, Australia, they're, they never really make it out of the group. I've never seen them make it out of the group, but they put on some good games, put on some good performances, but I'm going to go with France talking the group, Peru second. I think I'm going to agree with you on that one, actually. I loved it. I think I'd, I'd like to see Peru advance because, like, I mean, they haven't been to the World Cup for who knows how long. Have they ever even been to the World Cup? Uh, yeah, they yeah? have. Okay. It's been like 60 years. It's been forever. So, like, if Peru, I'd love to see Peru get out of Peru, honestly. And Denmark, I feel like they, they definitely could. This is definitely an underdog choice here, but I'm, I'm going to agree with Jared on that with Peru um, getting out of this group. So that's my prediction. So, uh, obviously, France, I'm predicting as well, is going to finish top of the group with their amazing talent and their very young team. However, I think that my boys, the Socceroos, Australia, are going to be finishing second in the group above Peru and then Denmark at bottom. And Australia has, they actually have quite a lot of amount of tickets sold to go to Russia. So they're going to have a good supporting base. And Aaron Moy is coming off, uh, you know, promotion team of uh, Huddersfield had a, good, a decent season. And I think Australia is going to, you know, with Peru and Denmark, I think it's going to be super tight. France probably going to get nine points. The rest of the teams are going to be fine. And I think Australia is going to either advance by, you know, a one or two point gap or even on goal differential. I think it'll be very close. Well, I mean, I could see, didn't, I, I forgot how many goals Tim Cahill scored, but I mean, he's, what, 39 or something like that? I, mean, I, I, could, I could see him doing pretty well in the World Cup against a group like that. But France is drawing that young U.S. team. I could see them drawing Denmark. I could see them just not getting the full nine points. So. I think in that situation it's a little different though, because I mean I love that the U.S. tied France. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, and they were playing their strength lineup. But it is a little different when it is the World Cup and everything's on the line. They've definitely had a talking to from their manager since then. They've definitely realized, holy crap, this U.S. team. I think the U.S. team is probably better than like Australia, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I, I'd like to think they are. And just going into that whole thing, like, U.S. is, like, comparable to some of those teams in, like, the way that we don't really have anyone besides Denmark, Denmark, those other people. That I think that France, I think still, I still think France is going to win it, but that's only because they're realizing we can't take any of these teams for granted like they did against the U.S. Yeah. And that's why I think France is going to finish first, and then I think Bruce going to finish second. For Group D now, this is an interesting group because this group also considered very tight and wide open for anyone to win, although Argentina are the favorites. Uh, so it's Argentina, Iceland, Croatia, and Nigeria. My second country. So uh, what are we thinking is gonna happen in this crazy group D? I'm gonna go out and say that, you see that this is tight though, because it's so unpredictable considering Argentina, Iceland, Croatia, and Nigeria. You have to put, take into consideration, Iceland had that crazy run of the Euros. Nigeria is like it's one of those teams that like they don't they have some they have good players and you can see them doing something good you can see them winning those games I can see Nigeria possibly beating Croatia but at the same time it, Croatia would be favored to win that game and just everything into this group would be really tough so I, I think this is what I'm going with I'm just going to go flat out just what I would think I think it's going to be Argentina and Croatia are going to finish that group I think Argentina's going to go first Croatia's going to go second um yeah it's a pretty solid pick. Uh, I just don't think Argentina barely got in the World Cup. Very average side. Reminds me of the 86 team where Maradona obviously carried Argentina on his back to win the cup. Um, I don't think Messi will do that for them. Um, but they're just, they're just so much better than uh, the other teams in the group. So I, I, would, I would have to agree with Ryan. Argentina and Croatia will definitely go through. All right, so for my predictions, if I'm not mistaken, 
Sergio Romero is out for the World Cup, right? Yeah. That's right, so with Sergio Romero out, who had some great saves in the last World Cup, uh, and Argentina already not being a great team, you know, they barely qualified. If they didn't have Messi, you know, they wouldn't even be here. So I'm predicting that this group is, I think anyone could advance in this group. I don't think Argentina's a lock to advance, and I don't, well, I also you know. I say that Argentina's a lock. I'm well, yeah, no, that, like, I just, just gonna go for a big name. Just, I just want to be a big name, so yeah. for me, I just, because I can't pick. I would say, so Nigeria obviously is one of the youngest teams in the World Cup. They have some nice young striking options. You got Musa Iheanacho, and I think they could bring some firepower. But uh, Croatia and Argentina are better overall teams. So I think it's either going to be, uh, I think top of the group, it, oh, this is a tough, I think any one of those teams besides Iceland could finish top, and any of them could finish second. Yeah, that's, but that's what I was obviously saying. I have to choose. So I'm going to say, Croatia finishes top of the group, and Argentina, without Romero, already shaky team, finishes third in the World Cup, or in their group, and does not advance, breaking their country's hearts. And Nigeria somehow advances, and you know, you may think it's a little biased with me being Nigerian, but, <laughs> but I think Nigeria is gonna be able to advance, and then they're obviously gonna have to play France, so they're gonna get whooped. But, Argentina, for me, will not advance. All right, so after the hectic Group D, couldn't really come to a decision. Uh, we've now got Group E, which features Brazil, heavy favorites to win this year's World Cup. Also, Switzerland, Costa Rica, and Serbia. That is a tough group, just like Group B. I think Group D, E, and F are, could all be considered groups of death. I think all have really, really good teams in it. Obviously Brazil to me, no brainer. I think they're they're definitely a lock in for me. Uh -huh. They're just so much talent wise better and they have that winning mentality and they need to they need to redeem themselves because of last World Cup. You know that seven one loss to Germany was horrible for them. Um so Brazil obviously number one coming through. I think they're getting nine points out of this. Um Neymar is obviously gonna be their best player. But I think they they switched up their tactics. Last last World Cup they relied too much on Neymar. This World Cup, I think they're going to diversify. I think they're going to be uh, just an all-around solid team. Obviously, Bobby Firmino up top. Um, don't know who would be playing there, right wing, right mid. But uh, yeah, uh, but second in the group is definitely going to have to be Switzerland. Switzerland's a very good team, underrated for me. Uh, Shakiri is just absolute god tier for them. He's a uh, he's a really good international level. I mean, he's linked to Liverpool right now, so he's definitely not a bad player. Very good. Uh, I watched him against Hungary in the friendlies. Very good against Hungary. Had uh, two assists. And uh, but, I mean, Costa Rica is not a bad team. You can't count them out. Um, but to me, they're just not a winning team. In Serbia, they have decent players, but uh, I just don't see them making it through. Yeah, I can agree with you on that. I think Brazil, obviously, that's a lock-in. They're gonna they're gonna destroy that group. There's really like there's some competition within the three teams besides Brazil. But other than that, Brazil should just fly through that group. If they don't, then that's embarrassing in my opinion. Um, Switzerland, on the other hand, I think they'll also get second just because Costa Rica and Serbia. Serbia is a solid squad, and so is Costa Rica. In my opinion, I think Costa Rica would actually probably finish last in that group or a tie between the two of them. But I think it's going to be Brazil, Switzerland. Switzerland will probably come out on top, um, not on top of the group, behind Brazil, but above those two other teams. So I definitely agree, uh, Brazil on top. And the second one. I'm probably going to have to go with Switzerland, who, as Jared said, underrated. They're actually sixth in the world ranking, to many people's surprise. But, you know, Costa Rica last World Cup, you know, they made it all the way to the quarterfinals. So they had a bit of a magical run. But I, uh, Costa Rica and Serbia, I just don't think their squad is going to be able to compare to that of Switzerland. I don't think, I mean, Switzerland's definitely not miles better, but I think they're definitely better. And Brazil, I think, is going to easily top this group. For Group F, we've got Germany, Mexico, Sweden, and Korea. And like Jared said earlier, this is another one of those group of death, death situations. I don't see South Korea doing that great. Besides, but they do have they have Sun, so that's pretty good. But besides that, they really they don't really have anything that like firepower going forward besides Sun. So I think it's really between Germany, Mexico, and Sweden. And this one's really tight. I have to say Germany is going to be on top just because Germany. 
I mean, they won the last World Cup. They have such a young, they have a young squad that's super solid. But they also have those older guys also that play defense and just are in such a solid squad. And so I, I've got to say Germany going top of the group. They, they, they probably won't win all the games. They might draw against Mexico or Sweden. I don't know what, but I think they'll they'll come on top. And then behind that, I really I think it's going to be Mexico. But that, I don't. I really it's such a tight decision for Mexico and Sweden because Sweden have such a solid like they got they got it figured out about the whole is they have such a good like chemistry with their squad and they know how to play they they play really well together but I think Mexico just has that little more chemistry that little more composure and so I think Mexico's gonna go finish second. Um yeah yeah uh for me again Germany's a lock in uh just like Brazil Germany's just so so good um obviously they won the last World Cup uh but to me they're just amazing uh obviously in the Confederations Cup. They were very, very good, and they didn't even play their uh, main starting lineup. They played their young players, and they dominated. Um, I see Germany and Mexico topping this group, uh, but Sweden could very easily take uh, Mexico's spot. And you can't sleep on South Korea. Uh, they've always put in good showings at the World Cup. They're not a bad team. Um, just, yeah, you can't count them out. can't count any team out really in the World yeah. Cup. Uh, Soccer's a crazy game, you never know what could happen. So, yeah, but Germany and Mexico, to me, are top of the street. Mexico has that, uh, the entire country stops for the World Cup. The entire country goes to Greece for the Mexican national team. And uh, it's just gonna be crazy and a fun group. So, as well as the other two, I agree. Germany will top this group, no doubt about it. But, uh, like they were saying, the Mexico-Sweden debate is interesting to me because as Ryan was saying, Sweden's chemistry is definitely after getting or not getting rid of, but after Zlatan's retirement from the national team, they definitely become more of a team yeah. together, and they, you know, knocking out Italy to reach the World Cup, many, you know, didn't think they would be able to do. Obviously, they were dominating possession. So, yeah. but Mexico as well is they've always been a decent team. They've got decent. They've got some good players up front: Chicharito, Dos Santos, and I think. Oh, they have they have Irving Lozano. Oh yeah, Irving Lozano as well. Nice for PSV, yeah. I think Mexico and Sweden. Whoever, I'm going to say Mexico to advance, but whoever really wins, in whoever wins that game, between that game, I think will make it. That, whoever wins, Mexico versus Sweden, that's going to be a big game to watch. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be really crucial for that group because if the, if. And I mean, it could likely be a draw, and then it goes down to goal differential, really, in that situation, which would be just incredible. Yeah, and if it goes down to goal differential, I'll definitely see Mexico going. Yeah. Mexico's more of a, they have more attacking options. Uh, yeah. I think they're better goal scorers. Sweden, I think all their games are going to be 1 1, 2 1, 1 oh. 0. Uh, I just don't see them scoring that many goals now yeah. that this lockdown's gone. So. That's, I think that's, that's going to be an interesting group to watch. So I think overall, we have Germany and Mexico finishing there right. between the three of us. In Group G, uh, we got Belgium, Panama, Tunisia, and England. Now, this is an interesting group. I mean, Panama, I don't see them winning that group. And then, it, well, actually, not really. I think it's, I'm just going to go flat out. I think it's going to be Belgium and England when getting that group. I think Belgium's going to finish top. They have such a solid lineup. Like, every time I think about them, you, you just always forget someone when you're naming off those players. It's like, how did I forget that person? Because they have so many stars. They have, uh, they've got, they got Hazard. Nine, not nine goal, they didn't call him up, which just shows how solid the midfield is just by that. I heard there's other things involved with that, but just by that itself, just like, if they're solid teams, they're solid attacks, they're solid defense, it's just, I, I can't see Belgium not winning that group, really. Yeah. And then England, I mean, if England doesn't advance, that just, that really wouldn't help their already poor fan base. But I think England and Belgium, I think it's Belgium will be top, England's second. Uh, what have you got? So, Obviously, England in the last World Cup had, you know, decent expectations. They had a very old squad with Rooney, Gerrard, you know, among, Lampard, among others. And they were trying to, they just put a bunch of old, experienced guys in. And this is completely opposite, as they have a very young squad this time around. And surely they won't finish bottom of the group like last World Cup. If they finish below Panama, then the England fans have that. to relocate. Yeah, that's true. But... <laughs> So I think this is going to be, a, a Tunisia is, I believe, the top-ranked African team, or one of the top-ranked African teams. The, and the Egypt, Egypt. 
top. Egypt? One. Yeah. But Tunis I know Tunisia's up there, and this is their fifth World fourth or fifth World Cup. So uh, they have some experience, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get past England or Belgium. So I'm predicting uh, Belgium on top, barely over England, who will finish second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, Belgium, this group is probably one of the weakest groups, maybe second, uh, if not the weakest group. Um, Belgium's a very, very good squad. To me, I don't understand how they don't have more success in uh, major tournaments. Very solid. Um, but I mean, everyone's calling them a dark horse to win it. I don't think they're a dark horse. I think they're up there. I definitely think they're up there to win it. Uh, Panama, they're, they're fighters. They, they fight for everything. They're scrappy. Uh, they play with their hearts. Um, that's how it should be. But I don't see them gaining any points. I don't see them getting any points out of this group. Uh, Tunisia, it's they're they're average side, just average to me. Um, I don't see them uh, progressing out of this group. Obviously, we have England. England, uh, their fans are trying to revitalize. Their fans are trying to change their ways. So obviously, they've been very, very uh, probably poor fans to England these last World Cups. But to be fair, uh, they do have a. They, they should be doing that. England, England should be one of the top teams every tournament. But I, I, have, uh, I have hope for this team because uh, obviously Harry Kane being their captain up top, uh, Jamie Vardy, Raheem Sterling, just a really good front three. Um, I see them getting second in this group, and I see them, I see them doing quite well this tournament as long as their fans can get behind them. Yeah, they'll, they'll do well. And then on the final group, Group H: Poland, Senegal, Colombia, and Japan. There's really, I think the biggest stars in this tur in this group right here are probably Poland and Colombia. This one for me is kind of tight because I don't really know much about any of the teams in this group really. But going off of what I saw last World Cup and just knowing what I know, I think, well here's the thing though, because I know, the, 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 let's name the stars of the teams. So obviously Colombia, you got Hannes Rodriguez as he's probably their biggest player. Well he is their biggest player. And then they've also got, who's the other guy got? Falcao, they have Falcao, they have Baca. And then Poland, obviously there's Lewandowski, and he's just an incredible striker, one of the best in the world. So you really can't, like it's hard to compare them. I think that's going to be a really close game when they play each other. I think Colombia's going to finish top of the group this one. Colombia's just, they have that play style from what I've seen last World Cup. And I think they're going to get out of this group. I think Poland's going to be right behind them. I don't see Senegal. Senegal has a solid team on, like, in some social, in some aspects. They've got Mane. They've got other people I can't think of right now. But they, they have a solid team. And Japan, I mean, just honestly, I haven't, I don't know any other team besides Kagawa. And so I don't see them doing, I don't see Japan or Senegal with advancing out of this group. I think we're pulling um, yeah, it's, uh, this is probably the weakest group besides Group G. Um, I just see, I see Poland topping the group. Uh, obviously they have the best striker in the world, Lewandowski, uh, leading the way. Um, they just have a Glick at center back and, uh, Chechny had a goalkeeper. They have some, they have a solid team, decent team, average. But to me, they're obviously the best. Um, Senegal, I really only know... Uh, Mane plays for him. Yeah. I don't. I don't really know anybody else. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of a few, but yeah. Uh, but to me, just another average team. Colombia. I'm, obviously, James had a really good World Cup. The uh, 2014 uh, scored that screamer in the round of 16. That was amazing. And uh, but also, I don't know. James. If James doesn't show up for them, I don't see them doing too well. Um, but I mean, Quadr they have Quadrado, they have Davidson Sanchez, they have Murillo, they have uh, Falcao, Baca, and Ospina. I mean, it's, it's an average team. So for Group H, uh, this one a bit of a toss up, and as Jared said, pretty much a weak, one of the weakest groups. So in uh, Colombia, we have a solid uh, star player, Hamas Rodriguez, the leading scorer of last year's World Cup, six goals, I believe. And also, Notably, they did not have Radamel Falcon in the last World Cup, who has been uh, doing pretty well with Monaco in recent years, the past two years. So I think Colombia 
with uh, Davis and Sanchez as well, breakout season for Spurs. I think Columbia's going to be able to finish top of this group. And the next one, I think, is a toss-up because Poland obviously uh, knocked out in the round of 16, I think, of Euros to Portugal. And they didn't have a great Euros. Lewandowski scored one goal. Uh, Senegal, Senegal, obviously, not as good as a team as Poland. But I think if Balde, Diaw, and Mane can just pace through the pace through the defense of the other teams and just abuse them, they'll be able to get through. However, their team, I would say, just isn't quite strong enough. So I'm gonna say Colombia tops the group and Poland finishes second. All right guys, so now we're gonna be doing the knockout rounds on for the rest of our predictions. So how we're doing this is we're doing our majority predictions for each group. So like I picked Nigeria to go through in their group, Group D, but in this, they're not gonna be in here because both of them pick Argentina and then also Croatia go through. So it's not gonna be like our individual now. Well, it's gonna be our predictions, but based it's off of all the majority has a group. Yeah. 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 The majority group predictions have advanced. All right, so for the first one, we got Uruguay and Spain. Who do you guys have winning this game? Um, Personally, Spain. Yeah. Uruguay has a, they have Jimenez and Godin at the back line, which is pretty good. But their center mids are just weak. I mean, they have Bentaker from uh, Juve, but he's 20, 21. I just don't see them doing too well against Spain, even though Spain lost their manager. It's just talent-wise, Spain. I can agree. I can agree with that. Yeah, I think Spain's going to advance. I think Uruguay could beat them. I think Spain's going to come out on top of this one. They've got David De Gea in goal. They've got Ramos and PK as center back. It's just such a solid defensive lineup. And on top of that, they've got a solid midfield. Spain just beats them everywhere, basically, in my opinion. So I think Spain can come on top of that one, despite just getting a new manager. Yeah. So in this one, it won't matter now because already the majority picked Spain, but I actually believe that Uruguay will, would be able to win this, and not in 90 minutes, but I think in extra time or pens, they'd be able to win. Uh, as Jared said, their midfield, you know, a bit weak, Ben Tucker, then also uh, Lorera. I think I don't remember Lorera, I forget how to pronounce his name, but he's had a good season as well. They got the Two solid center backs, and then Cavani and Suarez up top, and Musler in goal. So their team is def definitely not bad. And I think Spain, I, I think they're just going to be a bit overwhelmed with all the manager stuff. But, you know, obviously they got in their group not too hard just to get just Portugal on their way. But I do not think they're going to be able to beat Uruguay if this happens. I think Uruguay's going to win a close one in extra time. But Spain moves on for the... Majority. So, oh, so, so next we got France and Croatia. I think this would actually. I think. Oh, I think I'm speaking for maybe not all of us. But I think France is going to advance here. France is a favorite to win the World Cup, and despite like what we were talking about earlier, how they did tie the U.S. I think it is different. And once you get into these rounds, you really do play. You're playing for a different. It's not a friendly anymore. It's something competitive. Croatia definitely is got what it takes to beat France. I think they can. I think they could upset them. But in my opinion, I do think Frank's going to come on top of this one where they're solid. They just have a solid team. They've got Griezmann, they've got Pogba, they've got uh, Maurice and Goal, they've got such solid lineup. I just think if they didn't win this, then I don't know. I think they can be just, I think they'll win this game. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of Croatia. Uh, I love their team, I love their players. Um, I love the country in general, but France, just talent-wise, favorites to win the World Cup. Uh, I think they'll have some trouble this game. I definitely yeah. think they'll, they'll go through. Croatia will, will put up a fight, though, for sure. So, uh, both of them, I've already stated my opinion as well. Croatia is going to put up a tough fight. Uh, I think French is going to move on. And as well as the Uruguay Spain game, I believe this game will also be going extra time or penalties. Game, yeah. I think it's going to be a close game, but then French's talent is going to bring them over the edge, which will then as our majority has voted, put them into the quarterfinals to face Spain. Yes. So for the next one, we got Brazil and Mexico. I feel like this is this would actually be a tight game, I think. I think Brazil would kind of, Brazil is one of those teams that I feel like they're going to play hard, obviously. They're going to go through this. They might underestimate Mexico. I'm not saying they're going to lose, but they might underestimate, underestimate Mexico. Mexico has a lot of potential with their team. I think this would be a really tight game. I think Brazil might, I think Mexico might get a goal. A goal definitely score this game. I moved out of that in my head. I think they're gonna Mexico can get out on lead, but I think Brazil will end up winning this game. They'll wake up and they'll realize this we need to pull this together and win this game. 
But I think that will be a tight game. This might, like Gage has been saying the last two games, it might even go to extra time. But Brazil, I do see coming on top of this game. But that's not a game to sleep on. Mexico is not a team to sleep on at all. Um, yeah, obviously the last World Cup they matched up in the group. It was a very, very interesting game. Was it nil-nil or nil was it nil. one? Uh, it was nil-nil. So um, uh, Brazil, Mexico, Ochoa had an amazing game. Obviously it's a different Mexico team, um, a bit different players, different play style. But obviously, just like Ryan said, uh, you can't sleep on Mexico ever. They're a solid squad. So I mean, uh, Brazil just obviously again favorites to win, just like France. Uh, they I mean it's a lot they have to go through. So uh, controversially, as Jerry said, they played in the last World Cup, and it was actually Peru or they were actually Brazil was fine for bringing that game, in which I believe Mexico was disallowed like two goals. So you know. They're gonna. They could have a bit of a feisty game here, oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely but uh, I think either. I mean, just like I've been saying, the last two, the first two games, I predicted would be going to extra time. This one, I also think could go to extra time. Either that, or it's going to be a one goal game. I think Brazil's uh, pure talent, obviously with Neymar, leading the way for them. I think their talent and their overall experience and they're going to definitely want to come back from the humiliating defeat to Mexico, or not Mexico, Germany, sorry, Germany, 7-1 to one in last year's World Cup. So I think Brazil is going to sneak past Mexico in advance and majority rules that Brazil will be advancing. Yes, yeah, so we can watch that in. Next one we got Belgium and Poland. Uh, I feel like this will be an interesting game. Obviously at this point in the game, group, you really can't sleep on any team. I mean, you can't, Belgium, I feel like for me, they're the favorites to win this game. I mean, like I said, Jared had said earlier, they, people are saying they're dark horse. I don't think they're dark horse at all. I completely really agree with him. Belgium is one of those teams that you should look at and be like, if they don't if they don't get to those final four teams, then I don't know what makes sense anymore. Because that team is just so solid. They have such a solid lineup. So in my opinion, I think Belgium's going to take this game. I think Poland will give it to them. I think they'll definitely put a hard fight. But at the end of the day, Belgium's talent, and on top of that, this, they have such, such depth and such a solid squad that I don't see Belgium losing this game. Yeah, um, to me this is no brand of Belgium. I think it might actually be even a blowout. I'm, I'm guessing if it if it does come down to this three four nil, um, Poland's defense just would not be able to keep up with Lukaku and Hazard. Um, and just Belgium solid overall through out their team. Um, it would yeah just a blowout probably. So I'm gonna agree with both of them too that Belgium is gonna be advancing, and you know both are kind of like. Argentina with their amazing number of threatening attacking players, except, you know, they actually know what to do with them, like Argentina. But Belgium's going to walk away with this one. Um, this one I'm not predicting extra time. I think Belgium's going to be able to win it in regulation. All right, for the next one, we've got Portugal and Russia. Now, this is an interesting game. At the end of the day, though, I think Portugal's winning this game. It's just... Well, there's always so much a home crowd can do. Russia's got a talented squad, but Portugal is just a better team. And in some days, on the pitch, that just happens. I mean, the crowd definitely will be big for that game. But at the same time, I feel like it won't be as bad as that first group. I feel like because of those play those people like Cristiano Ronaldo on the team from Portugal, I feel like that will take away from the whole home field advantage, considering there are I mean, a lot of people that would support that team, even if they are Russian, because that's just how it goes sometimes. I do think Portugal's going to walk away with that game. Not saying that it has to really do with the fans. I think Portugal will probably just blow out Russia. I mean. That's not the case for me. I disagree with Ryan. I, even though I didn't pick Russia to get out of the group, because uh, personally I feel like they underrated uh, Egypt a bit. Egypt's number one in Africa for a reason. Just, it's not because of Mo Salah. Uh, obviously that's a big bonus when you have arguably, at, at the moment, second best player in the world. At the moment. Um, I think Russia is going to go through against Portugal. I think Portugal is uh, a bit overrated at times. Uh, I feel like I overrated them a bit saying, you know, Euro 2016 champs. It was a lucky win, uh, obviously against France, lucky strike. Um, no offense to Eder, but to me, just Portugal just does not seem that solid. They seem a bit, a little bit older when I'm thinking yeah. you know, some of their players come to mind. Uh, and I just think some of that World Cup magic will happen. Russia will go through and uh, see who they face. I'd love to see that happen. I just don't see that happening. I just I'm going off what I what I know and think Portugal would take that one. 
So Portugal, obviously, uh, big game players. They've got, uh, obviously, with the home crowd of Russia, it's going to be very in a very hostile environment for the Portuguese players. But, you know, Ronaldo, Pepe competed in multiple finals. They also won the Euros 2016 finals, so they're going to have uh, tons of players with experience from the previous tournament. And this one, I think, I would say, kind of like Euro 2016, where Portugal went to like two penalty shootouts. I think this one's going to go to a penalty shootout, and I think uh, in the end, Portugal is going to win it in a penalty shootout. However, I think this game could go either way. But if just because I have to, I'm going to say Portugal in a penalty shootout. But I do agree with Jared how they are overrated in their Euro 2016 final run. You know, not the greatest of yeah. runs. But I think, yeah, I, I'm not saying, I, I mean, I don't want to be taking off of all the people. And it sounds kind of weird because there's nothing wrong with supporting Portugal. But I'm not a big Portugal supporter either. I just going off of what I think will happen and trying to get as accurate as possible. I think Portugal will take this one. So because the majority will go Portugal there. The next day of Argentina and Peru. Now, uh, this one actually, I want to. I think, I think Peru getting here. I want to say I want to see Peru winning this game. I don't know if they will, but I want to see them win this game because if they do, that would be incredible. And so I want Peru to win this game. I'm, this is my underdog, my major underdog card here. I'm saying Peru's going to win this game. Messi, something might happen with him because there is those four games. I'm saying something happens to Messi, something happens in this game, and I think Peru might maybe even get a little lucky. Maybe something will happen. Argentina might misunderstand them something like that. I think Peru's winning this game. Yeah, um, you can't count anybody out at this point, like Ryan said. But Argentina, just in the end, talent will probably win because uh, every team here is going to be working hard. So I just think talent's going to win in the end. And uh, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of what-if situations, but Argentina over Peru any day. So I'm going to agree with Jared there that Argentina's pure talent is going to get them through. And it's this is really interesting because into the quarterfinals then, that means we would have Portugal versus Argentina, Ronaldo versus Messi, neither team which has like is a moment. great team. I mean, obviously let's, a great player. Let's talk about these two first. But yeah, that. so, so that's an interesting matchup. Yeah. So Germany and Switzerland. we got Germany, Switzerland. I think Germany's going to win that game. No way in my head. I think Germany's taking that one. Yeah, uh, obviously France and Germany both had those draws and uh, friendlies. I mean, Germany, no, Germany ended up beating uh, Austria, never mind. Yeah. Uh, in late minute goal, but Austria was putting up a fight. Austria's not a bad team either. I, I would definitely compare them to Switzerland. Uh, similar strengths. Um, you know, just in the end, the Germans are methodical. They're the best team in the world for a reason, and uh, Germany's taking this win. I'm going to agree with Jared there. Germany's going to, uh, I don't know, I mean, probably cruise through this game. I'd say two goal, two goal win probably. And it's going to be interesting to see how Timo Werner can do because, you know, he could be powering them through. Even with his experience and balance with the young, you know, being through Switzerland that and Colombia versus England, not the hardest yeah. of teams. Team, team is going to be somebody you have to look out for. So, so then next we got Colombia and England. This one for me is kind of tough. I got to say I'm just going to be flat out. I think England's going to win this game. I think England's going to have a win this year. Don't think they're going to get out of this next round, but I do think they'll beat Colombia. I mean, England's team just overall I think is better than Colombia. They got Harry Kane. They have got Sterling. They have got Deli Ali. They got their. They just have a solid team. I mean, like. They're just going to be Colombia, but I think like, I'm not going to talk about it too much. I like the winning game. Yeah, uh, England just got to win. Better spot. Simple as that. Uh, I'm picking Colombia to win this game because Colombia, you know, they obviously last World Cup, England was trash. Colombia had a decent run to the quarterfinals, and I think Hamas and Falco up top, obviously Cuadrado as well. They can. They're going to be able to power through England, which doesn't have a lot of experience at all in the World Cup. Very young squad. With Harry Kane as a captain. Has Harry, does, he doesn't captain Spurs right now. No, I don't think he does. Yeah, Harry Kane is not an experienced captain, which I think Jordan Henderson's 
probably, I know he's not as good as Harry Kane, but better captain yeah. leader role. Uh-huh. So I think, uh, obviously, England's going through in our bracket because of the majority, but I would pick Colombia to win this game. Yeah, um, but you can see the difference in the fans. Colombia, I was watching a video today. Colombia, the fans are just, they're, they're supporting the team. They're saying how it brings the country together. It stops uh, just violence and stuff. It just brings the country together. England, you see the fans. Oh, you, see, yeah. you see them booing their own team at the World Cup, 2014 and 2010. They're both booed. So. I mean, that's, that's one of those situations where you're like, that's going to be a good game to watch. You're going to watch that game. That's going to be intense. I think environment will be definitely towards Colombia. I think Colombia's going to have it that on their side. But I do think it's going to be one of those games where you watch that game and you're like, Colombia should have won. But I think Eagles going to come away with that game. Yeah. I think Eagles going to pull that through. I think maybe there's going to be a ball that Harry Kane just clinical cool enough to finish. I think that's what he's going to do it. I think it's going to be one of the situations. All right, so now we have the top side of the bracket in the quarterfinals. We have our first matchup, Spain, France, and then Brazil goes in front of them. So who are we thinking is going to come on this Spain, France heavy hitters game? This is where it gets interesting. Spain and France, two of the top powerhouses, probably one of the most, would be one of the most hyped up games in, in all the world. This will be a game you have to watch. Um, Obviously, Spain, arguably best players uh, on the ball, probably, I would say Isco. Isco's a bit underrated, he's been leading them. Um, I do think that their attacking options might be a bit lacking, but yeah. defensively, Ramos and Pique, arguably two of the best center backs. Um, it's just overall a good team. Obviously, they have De Gea, the best uh, goalkeeper in the world at the moment, but France, has they have the most depth. Definitely. They're, they're a young team, not too much uh, experience, but I, I can't see Spain going too far in this tournament just due to the manager being sacked. So I'd, I'd have to pick France for this one. I have to agree with you on that. I think France is going to win. I mean, Spain definitely, you can't discredit them. They have a solid team. They have an incredible defense. They hit and goal with Sergio Ramos and PK in front of him. That's just a, a back line you don't want to mess with. Definitely one of the best depth back line. Only one that really has competition in this tournament would be Germany's back line. Yeah. And that's just such a tight, that's going to be tight. But at the same time, then you think about as a whole squad, I think France has it over them. They have, France is 100% better attacking them. And I think France's attack will be able to break down that defense. It'll take a while, I think they can. And uh, on top of that, France probably has, in my opinion, now I might be forgetting about a certain, some teams. I think France probably has the best midfield in this tournament, going with Pogba and Conte in the midfield. It's just, that's just filthy. You can't, that shouldn't be allowed, but it is because they're French. And so, I mean, like, in that situation, I think France is winning this game. It'll be tight, it definitely will be, but I think France will pull this out. Yeah. So, uh, in the round of 16, I actually picked Uruguay to beat Spain, and, you know, reasons for that being uh, Spain, you know, all confused, tossed up with the manager situation, and so Spain now threw on majority against the French game. Uh, I think, France will take this one uh, due to just their talent, their attacking talent, and Spain's still going to be a bit flustered from the managerial situation. But even you know, even without that, it'd still be super close, and I think it, it still will be super close, potentially an extra time game. Uh, but I think France is hungry. I mean, I know some of their like Mbappe didn't play in the Euros, but. Uh, the players that were playing at the Euros are hungry. Like Griezmann, he's gonna come out hungry, trying to win, because he did, he's sick of losing, oh, yeah. especially to Ronaldo. But, I mean, they're not playing Ronaldo, but uh, Griezmann and in France are gonna come out strong, hungry, and the discombobulated Spain isn't gonna be enough to top France. All right. So we got next. We got Brazil and Belgium. This is a big game because these are two teams that are like are definitely contenders like the last one to win the World Cup. This is just such a hard brackets to fill. Personally, I think Belgium is taking this one. Like, I keep it up when people refer to this. Jared did say they're a dark horse, how everyone thinks and how people would say that. But they're not. I'm going to keep reading this. They're not dark horses. I think Belgium, no-brainer, one of the best, if not the best team in the world at the moment. Their attack is so solid. Their midfield is so solid. They just have such a solid attack. And I think they're just going to destroy like Brazil's defense. I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be a blowout for Belgium. I'm just saying the amount of attacks, the amount of shots that Belgium's going to have is going to be incredible. I think Brazil will be more clinical, 
but I think Belgium is just going to overrun them in the shots. Yeah, no, Brazil's Brazil's going to win. Uh, I can't trust Ryan on that at all. Uh, to me, this is the game where you see Kaku hitting it over the bar, over the goal, three times. You see Hazard looking like just Ronaldo in the Champions League final in Kiev, uh, just a shell of his former self, you know. Uh, this is the game to where I see Belgium just not playing well at all. I see Brazil just locking them up. I see I see Neymar getting a brace. I see just Brazil playing well and moving on to play France in the semis. So this one interesting for me as uh, obviously as Ryan saying he doesn't believe Brazil's a dark horse or Belgium's a dark horse. They have great attacking players as well as a great defense. I mean, I'm not forgetting about that. Oh, definitely. They have amazing. They have amazing players all around. Yeah. But uh, Belgium's fullback area is restricted. I know they brought like some wingbacks, but. Mounier is, I think, their only natural fullback. Yeah, well, I think they through the and, and even then, I feel like he's a bit yeah, of a at the, I think, with that being said, with them being their only, him being their only natural fullback, even with three in the back, five in the back, you know, same thing. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Filming a video. What are you doing? Filming a video. Go back inside. As I was saying, Brazil's wingers are going to overrun uh, Belgium with the fact that Belgium's natural fullbacks are limited to only Thomas Mooney here. Uh, Neymar on the left, Coutinho on the right, uh, William also another option on the right side. So I think Brazil's going to win this one in a if I had to say, I would say it'd be like a maybe like a three-two game or a four-three game. It would be a very interesting game, probably high scoring. So that moves them to the semifinal of France. That'd be an interesting game. And I forgot Portugal, Argentina. Like I wanted to say earlier, but I'm gonna cut you off because we're gonna finish the rest of this. Yeah. That'll be the, if that game happens. That's gonna be the decider who is actually the best. I mean, like in um, my in my opinion, like because from what's everything happening, because they got Argentina and Portugal against each other, like. That's the best way to compare it, really, because Argentina, only person to score for them for a year. I don't know if it's still outstanding, but for that year, Messi was the only one to score for them, which is just like with everyone they have, that shouldn't that shouldn't happen. And then Portugal, once again, just they're a solid team, but not as solid as everyone makes them out to be. That'll be a really interesting game. I feel like both teams in that game, that's going to be a sloppy game in my opinion, honestly. I don't think it's going to be played that well. I think it's going to be very interesting. And you're going to watch it and be like, how is this a World Cup game? I think Messi and Ronaldo, I think it's not necessarily their fault. Obviously, they're one player out of the most players on the field. But I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a close game. But I think one of those games that has so many opportunities for both sides where no one can finish the ball. No one's being clinical. And I, at the end of it, I see the opportunity going through. Yeah, um, for me, it's, it's Portugal. Uh, Argentina is just a very average squad. It would be interesting to see Ronaldo and uh, Messi finally see each other in uh, international play, but I, don't know, I just don't see Argentina going through. Portugal is a much better squad compared to Argentina. So, uh, as I've already stated, I do believe Portugal is overrated. Although, you know, I had them top the group over Spain just because of Spain's managerial problems, which may have heard at the front, but so Portugal coming in playing Russia in the round of 16, and then Argentina playing Peru. That's like, that's very forgiving round of 16 games. And they're lucky enough to be able to play each other in the uh, quarterfinals, which I don't think either one is a better, or not like a great squad. But, so I think this one could definitely be a tight one. And I'm, gonna, I'm disagreeing with Ryan on the fact that he says whoever wins this is better than well, Messi Ronaldo. I was just really trying to be a, in the moment kind of thing. I mean, obviously that's not the case. Yeah, but I feel like a lot of people will use that as a reason. If this game wins, that's going to be like, oh well, Messi's better because they won. Yeah, people definitely would say that. But 
Argentina as a squad is just, as Jared and Ryan both said, or Jared, Jared said, not a good squad at all. When they should be, that attacking options, Di Maria, Higuain, Dybala, Aguero, uh, they even they left a Cardi. Yeah, not I mean, I know they have reasons for him. No, Dybala's coming. Oh, yeah. But uh, I think Argentina, I would say this is Portugal versus Russia, as I said. I think that go depends. And I think this one is going depends. And... Portugal will win on pens, and now I do think Argentina obviously could be a little bit better and maybe take it earlier in extra time. But Argentina and pens, they lost two Copa Americas in a row on pens to Chile. So, I mean, just having that in the back of their minds is just going to freak them out. And Portugal obviously won two penalty shootouts in the Euro 2016. So, I think uh, in the end, in the penalty shootout, that's going to help lift Portugal up to beat Argentina barely. All right, we got Germany and England for the last one of the quarterfinals. All right, uh, to interrupt you, I don't think we really need to talk about this one. I think it's Germany. I think we can all agree yeah. on that. No need to talk. There's really no discussion. Germany will just Germany's gonna win that game. Yeah. So let's, do we even need to talk about it? Now no. think about it though. No, no, no. no Germany's winning that game. So first, when we have semifinals, we have France and Brazil. Now, I feel like this entire tournament, I've been kind of anti-Brazil. But this game, I'm actually going to go pro Brazil. I think Brazil winning this game. I think it'll be tight. But when Brazil plays at their best, and I think they will in this game because they're the semifinals and they want to make up for their second one defeat last year against Germany. I think Brazil's winning this game because they're just they're going to play their best. I think they're all going to be locked in. They're going to be ready for this game. And they're going to win. Um. Yeah. To me, France is just too young. They don't have enough uh, experience. Uh. I mean, they made it this far. Semis. Good showing. Uh. But obviously. France as a whole will be expecting to win it, but to be honest, it's just Brazil's better. Uh, a player that I feel like we've been sleeping on is probably Marco Firmino. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's my uh, pick, Brazil. So, I agree with Jared there. France is young. I think they're definitely going to be hungry, as will Brazil. Both are going to want this very badly, and uh, this is a rematch of the 2002 World Cup Final, in which Brazil won. So. To have a history against each other, but these are probably two of the top three uh, powerhouses right now for favorites to win the World Cup along with Germany. Um, so I think Brazil, as they said, is going to be. I think Brazil is going to overwhelm France in the end, and it's going to be a just like the Brazil Belgium game. I think it's going to be at least four goals. Maybe 2-1, 3-1, 3-2, and I think Brazil is going to pull it out and advance to the World Cup final. Nice. So next one, we got Portugal and Germany here. This is going to be tight. Actually, no, what am I going to say? That's not going to be tight. I think Germany's blind in Portugal. I'm yeah, to find again, out. What am I saying? Again, Portugal, Germany's just blind. To me, it's just like England. No need to talk about it. Germany's winning. So, I'm going to say here, well, if you remember, in the 2014 FIFA World Cup semifinals, all right, you need to go home. Brazil had a strong showing of a one, one goal showing. However, got murdered by Germany, and that's what Germany's going to do to Portugal. Germany's going to win at least 4 0 in this game. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's and gonna be a small round. So this is going to be you know, a joke. Somehow, I think somehow Ronaldo could possibly get a score. It won't matter anyways, just a consolation goal. Germany. By this point, three right. plus. Yeah, definitely. So Germany at this point is going to be like, this is ridiculous. Give us an actual competition. I mean, like, really through through all of this, like, Germany really hasn't had that big of a problem, and that's I feel like what's going to be their downfall in the final against Brazil. I think Brazil actually takes the crown on this one because I think Germany is going to be so used to playing these weaker competition. I think they aren't going to be ready for Brazil. Brazil is going to want payback. For that, and obviously, if you're in the World Cup final, you can't sleep on any team. And I'm not saying they're going to be sleeping on it, but I think Germany's going to go into this game a little more confident than they should be because they're going to go through these games, these last couple of games, just blowing out opponents. And they're going to think, we got this, this is our cup. And Brazil's going to give it, give it to them because Brazil does have tighter competition going into this. They're playing France, they're playing Belgium, they're playing in like tight teams. These are going to be tight games. I think Brazil takes this game. I think 
It's going to be tight, but I think what's going to happen is that Brazil's going to take two goals pretty quick, and then Germany's not going to be able to cover for it. I think it's going to happen. That's my prediction for what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to be biased on this. I, I want Brazil to win. I don't want Germany to win. Uh, shout out to Dio out there. I, I don't want. That's the thing, though. I don't want Brazil to win <laughs> because, like, if we, if they win the World Cup. You guys know we're never hearing the end of it. Yeah. But at the same time, going through all of this, just using my watch, like due to what I know and everything, I can't see Brazil. Like I, I obviously I can see Brazil losing, but I don't think they will. I think they'll be like, we need to do this, we need to pull it off. This is the time. Yeah. You didn't pick Belgium to beat them, so. Well, yeah, but once that's the thing though, because that's then, and then they're in the finals. Yeah. And so it's a different ball game when they get that far, and so then they're realizing this is it. This is what we need to pull off. But I do disagree with you. Germany's going to keep that in the back of their mind. They're very smart, and very good players. Uh, they're going to be reminded of that. That obviously Brazil's going to come out hungry. But I think that Brazil's downfall, if they do lose, I think they're going to win. But if they do lose, it would be because they've been playing tough competition. Mexico, Belgium, and France. They're going to be tired. They're going to be just worn out. That makes sense. Yeah, so, that, does do, that does go two ways. Yeah, but I, I pick Brazil here. So. Uh, so. I think, what I'm thinking, I'm agree with Jared on the fact that they will be tired after the three hard oppositions. Germany, obviously, Portugal, England, and Switzerland. You know, good teams, but not Belgium, France, and, you know, Mexico is not as good. Yeah. Uh, Germany, so obviously, 7-1 over Brazil, last World Cup in the semifinals. Yeah. Brazil's going to want revenge from that. They're going to be hungry. Neymar didn't even play in that game because he was injured. So... I'm not saying they would have won, but yeah, maybe. But uh, this is going to be an interesting one because, as Jared said, high IQ players in Germany, they're going to know in the back of their mind. Can't sleep on anyone. And uh, I'm, this is, you know, my prediction is kind of exactly how, what, how Jared is thinking. Brazil's going to be tired, hard oppositions. And I think Germany is going to be a much fresher team. And as uh, stated earlier, the Confederations Cup last year, Germany won that with like their backup squad, U twenty like U twenty three, and you know so the Brazil has depth, but Germany I think has the greater depth. They're going to be less worn out, and I think this one is going to be a close game. But I feel like Germany is going to win potentially in extra time, but close game Germany wins. Yeah, I'm gonna I want Brazil to win, but I actually have to think. Germany will win this, just based on yeah. this. Yeah, Germany will win. This. I do. Yeah, I, I would rather Brazil win, but I, I mean, I think Germany's gonna go back to back. Yeah. So we got Germany then for the yeah. final honors. So that is. Then a, wait, wait. We cannot forget about the third place game. Third place. France versus Portugal. Rematch, Rematch of the Euro 2016 final. That's gonna be a juicy game. France is gonna be a bit hungry. I think France is gonna beat them. I'm just oh yeah, France to me it's gonna be a blowout. That's gonna be like France is gonna be like, okay, we're done with this. Just yeah. get this out of the way. Let's get going. Um, Ronaldo's gonna be pissed, obviously. Um, I don't think he's gonna play well this tournament. But to me, it's just France. Just they, they would win the third place game. Easily. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be like that game back in the Euros. I think France is gonna come out a lot hungrier, a lot hungrier than they should have that game. They should, they're going to play like they should have played in that Euro game, and they're just going to dominate for Portugal. I think they're going to win. Yeah. Uh, what I'm thinking is no one's going to care. They lost, I think, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong, that's the thing. They're going to be both going to be pissed off, obviously. Yeah. France, obviously, way better team than Portugal. I think France would probably win if that happens, but I mean, it doesn't really yeah, matter. They don't care. I don't think either team's going to. I mean, maybe Griezmann, because, you know, Ronaldo. He doesn't yeah. want to lose to Ronaldo again. But yeah, after Ballon d'Or stuff. Who you were just going to play in the semis last year? The Netherlands. Yeah, Netherlands. Netherlands. The Netherlands yeah. Netherlands didn't make it. They didn't make the World Cup. They didn't make the World Cup. But, uh, and Italy missed their first well, ever World Cup. Was, that's, that's heartbreaking. I feel like if Italy had been on here, that would have changed. Well, obviously, if any team had been on here, but I feel like Italy, if they had been in the World Cup this year, that would have been the change to all of this. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so. I, I think all these teams are way better than Italy. Not necessarily. This, I think these four teams destroy Italy. France, Spain, Brazil, Germany. Brazil. Germany. Oh, yeah, Germany. I think also Germany. I think they'll destroy Italy. Well, that is our prediction. However. Oh, okay. Why not? 
We have to predict a golden boot winner and a best player winner. Oh, yeah, you're right. So based on our bracket, we have Germany and Brazil in the final, Germany winning it. So what are we thinking for top goal scorer? Moeller. Thomas Moeller? Yeah. A I mean, very prestigious score uh, for Germany. He scored 10 goals in all World Cups. I think this is his third, third World Cup. He's one of the top goal scorers of all the World Cups. I mean, obviously, uh, his ex-German teammate, Kosa, 16 goals in the World Cup. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a record. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Muller, I could definitely see him breaking the record one day. I think he's gonna have a strong tournament. I think Timo Werner's gonna take it. Honestly, their top, their top striker against this weak competition that scores for like days. I mean, obviously the strikers have a little that scores, but I feel like he would bet hard. I think he's gonna win that one. So, as Jared said, if Muller does win the Golden Boot Award, that could put him the top World Cup goal scorer ever. Obviously, close to 16, then uh, Brazilian Ronaldo with 15, I think. Um, for this one, uh, obviously Germany is going through the easy opposition, so I can definitely agree with Muller or Werner, either one of those things I wouldn't rule out, I'd definitely say both of those players could, however, I think this is going to be Neymar's tournament, and Neymar's going to win the Golden Boot, obviously though, I don't think they'll win the final. I could see that, yeah, definitely yeah. Neymar. And then also the best player award. I think the best player award will probably go to either Neymar or Cruz. I can see Tony Cruz having a strong tournament. He's obviously arguably the best center in the world. But uh, honestly, Neymar. Neymar will take away the best player award. I can agree with that, yeah. Uh, I'm also saying Neymar to win best player award. award. And our last and final award. The Golden Glove Award. Um, now it depends. Is a I'm not, I'm just not calling this Neuer's back, right? Neuer's back. I think. And with Spain getting out in the quarterfinals. Spain, if Spain did go out in the quarterfinals, then I feel like it'd be. A, but at the same time, do they take? Now I don't know how this all works. Just do they take in for kind of to be a play? Because I feel like it's all going to be shutouts for Portugal. For, 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 yeah, yeah, I think Germany. because if, if that's the case, if those are shutouts and they don't take that into account to be a play, then no doubt Neuer. Yeah, I, I just think. Yeah, uh, stage like yeah. Neuer. Yeah. I feel like it's gonna be Neuer. Um, if, if Spain made it farther, then I could. We could argue. Yeah. Uh, De Gea, but at this point, Spain getting out early, it's, it's gonna be Neuer. So based on uh, our bracket predictions, Germany obviously with the basically not a cakewalk, but fairly easy round yeah. to the final. Neuer, I could definitely see picking up the Golden Glove, but. Also, in the case that Brazil the, the beat France and Belgium and That's don't cool. give up on goals, I think Allison could end up uh, be up there with Neuer for the Golden Glove. But I'm predicting that the Belgium and France game are going to be high scoring, so I don't think he will. But in the case that Brazil just stuns, it, stuns everyone and like, just shuts them out, uh, Allison could pick it up because they definitely take into account them that, you know, Play. Yeah, but yeah. then, but then I feel like it comes down to who won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Neuer. Yeah, Neuer. Yeah. So that's our predictions, guys. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you guys disagree, then I mean, this is just all three of us. We all had different opinions on it. I mean, if I had, so what I said, Peru would have been against would have been up against Portugal. Like you know what I mean? Like it, everything changes depending on one game, one in it. Definitely watch the World Cup, guys. It's going to be a hell of a tournament. It's going to be super good games. It's going to be very entertaining. Language. It's going to be good, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you watched this entire video, then uh, I'll give you mad props. Mad but, props. This is like a 30-minute video. Yeah, 30 minute plus. I hope you guys all enjoyed it, though. This is going to be a crazy tournament. It's going to be fun. I'm so excited for it. Top of that, the U.S. did just win the bid for 2026. That's super exciting. I'm real pumped for it. Um, it's going to be good. I feel like the future for all this is good. I feel like this is going to be a very entertaining tournament. And I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.